All right, guys, welcome back to yet another segment of the uh, Cisco Firewall Teach to Fish. I'm going to get started here. Uh, this is the initial engineering architecture and implementation discussion, which is all about what you need to know to be able to uh, plan, purchase, and deploy a firepower device. Hopefully, all of the concerns that you will have when you're trying to deploy. So this is the design considerations, and this is a huge bucket of stuff to talk about. Now, my slides aren't going to be super fancy. Um, there's lots of features, so we're just going to move directly on. And these aren't going to be super fancy, nice-looking slides because I'm going to make it interactive and be jumping kind of back and forth. So the first thing I recommend you do when you're getting ready to plan or and looking at these design considerations is just immediately Google the Firepower XXX datasheet. Okay, so we're going to go open up our Chrome. I'm going to say Firepower. Let's just say 1,000 datasheet to start, and we're going to use this. <coughs> now. One of the first things you want to do is, obviously, you're looking at form factor, does it fit in the rack and all that. One of the other things you look at is, what type of ports does it have? Does it have SFPs? And if so, what do you need to consider about it? So we're looking at the 1000 series. Now, that includes the 1010, which is super small box. It has fixed ports, so you can see the pictures here, USB and copper Ethernet. And then the 1140s and 50s, which are these bigger profile 1RU boxes. And notice they have this thing over here for SFPs. Now, Datasheet is great because it has a lot of this summary data and it gives you a rough idea of what the throughput is. But this is again using our specific test set, just like every vendor. So further down is the real meat and potatoes of how you'll figure out if this is sized specifically for you. So let's get back to SFPs. If you have them, obviously SFPs can be varied. Uh, SFPs allow you to choose what interface you're getting, whether it's a copper SFP or a fiber SFP. And these are germane to your decision making. What do you have in your data center? How far do you have to go? Obviously, if it's much longer runs, you typically will run fiber. And then depending on the length, uh, you have to decide whether you're using multi-mode or single mode because multi-mode is for shorter lengths, 62.5 or 50 micron. Super long runs are typically 50 micron on single mode fibers. So those are all things you have to worry about. Not only that, the type of fiber connection, if you're LC, MC, SC, uh, all of those things matter, right? So that's on the data sheet. It helps you figure out kind of what you're going to do. Other things you want to look at is, do you need remote access VPN? And now that is going to be in here. And remote access VPN, you have a few things to consider. You have to consider what do you want your maximum aggregate throughput to be? And that's this line here, IPsec VPN throughput. Now that's, of course, if you're using IPsec VPN throughput. Now, um, they register this as like 400 megs for the Firepower 1010. And again, with our fat packets, not super fat, but fat packets and fast path. Now, one thing you need to understand about this number is this is the aggregate throughput. So considering you have a uh, 100 or 200 VPNs connected, this is the maximum total throughput you will see with traffic that has these characteristics. However, you need to be careful in understanding that the discrete throughput for each single VPN session will be capped at a much lower rate. And that's because each session still has to be processed either by a special NPU or by the processor itself. And that means it's tied to one single core. So that one single core can only handle a certain maximum segment of that traffic. So typically you're looking at roughly, I don't know, two megabits per second per single session, and it does vary. So this is one of the things you'll have to talk to your TSA about to get very accurate data about the maximum single client throughput through this device if you want that. But generally speaking, here's your aggregate throughput and then the maximum number of devices you can expect to have sessions at the same time. This number is slightly variable, but these are the data sheets with the picture perfect test set traffic that we're using here. So that's VPNs, <coughs> or a VPN. One thing you might want to look at too is field replaceable components. And why this matters or might matter to you is we have a breakdown of all the physical connectivity on these boxes. And some of these components you can rip out and replace yourself. And why does that matter? Well, depending on your reactivity in your data center, you may not want to wait for an RMA. You may be able to have a bunch of hot spares or cold spares sitting on a shelf and you know that, hey, when one of the power supplies fails, let me see, you can just go and replace it. Now on the 1000 series, there are not multiple power supplies, but let's look at the Firepower 4000 data sheet, for example. And if I come look, again, all the same data here, structured the same way, 
If I come look down at the physical hardware specifications, not only do you get the SFP and network module data, but down here you'll see that some of these have single and dual optional power supplies. So knowing that you have a second power supply and it can run on just one means, hey, it's a great idea to just have a bunch of hot swappable secondary sitting there. And when one fails, your network doesn't come down, you rip out the bad one, throw in the new one, and you have that redundancy and consistency back running. Another thing is fans. They do routinely fail, and if you look at the fans here, you can see this one doesn't even have any, that's the 1010, and then the higher levels, that has fans, but they're integrated. That means if a fan fails and you absolutely must replace it, you have to RMA the whole chassis. Whereas on these larger boxes, you have the freedom of having hot swap fan spare parts, and when the fans fail, you can gracefully rip out the old one and throw in a new one, and you're back to your high redundancy, uh, operations without any impact to your network. So things to look at, right? Just look at how many hot swappable components you have, what you can do, same with SFPs. All right, the redundancy of components is kind of covered in that. If you've looked through and found that you've got field replaceable components, that's great, you know you've got redundancy. <coughs> so let's talk about some of the additional features. And I'm gonna kind of build up from the ground here because Ultimately, most people, though, the one thing they really want to look at is your throughput and your sizing. Um, but that really depends on the type of traffic you're expecting this box to be handling and what features you want to use. So let's talk about malware to start. The malware component, the AMP for networks component in Firepower, tells Firepower to take not just packets on a packet by packet basis and look for that fingerprint or thumbprint of bad stuff in that singular packet. It says, hey, throw all of the packets together to build the file that's being transferred and then test that. Declare whether that's good or bad and block or allow that file as an aggregate. Files are sometimes invisible to the packet by packet inspection, which is why AMP is extremely important here. So malware, as you can imagine, has to uh, cache these packets and then hash the file and then submit it and do all this extra stuff. Each feature you turn on consumes additional CPU or RAM as it's trying to do this. Now, if you're turning on a feature that consumes CPU and RAM, that means there's less CPU and RAM available for everything else. That's why these numbers for throughput and sizing are very hard to easily pinpoint. We can't just post a data sheet that says it gets this much throughput because we allow you, if you're not using those resources to malware, to consume them and use them for URL. So if you're running a box bare bones, just as a regular firepower allowing traffic in and out, you get extremely high throughput. You start turning on some of these alternative features like malware, inspection, or URL, and you're going to decrease the throughput of the box while gaining those additional capabilities. Again, the trade-off here is what capabilities you want to have active versus the throughput on the box. Now you can compensate when you turn on additional features by adding uh, more resources or adding more firewalls into a cluster or HA setup. So that's malware at a thousand foot level and we'll get into configuring that in my live demonstration configuration later. Next up is URL and this is where you get the live data feeds from Telus that feeds these features and feeds the uh, intelligence on the box so that you can block things based on categories like gambling or porn or anything else that comes through that you don't want in your network. Now you have the ability to whitelist and blacklist manually, but the URL feature is the live feed. So that one requires internet connectivity, number one, or you manually updating it. And Okay, now based on the description of URL, you can understand that it doesn't have a very high impact on CPU or RAM because it's, it's not caching data or doing packet by packet inspection. It's simply inspecting the headers uh, to see where this packet is going and it's correlating either IPs or host names depending on how you're configuring this to allow or block traffic. So that's a pretty simple one. It doesn't have quite as much of an impact. Inspection. This is where we're looking at the snort component of the firepower firewall. So on a packet by packet basis as these packets are flying through the box it is inspecting the entire contents. Everything from the headers of the packets to the payload, every bit is getting inspected to look for these fingerprints of known malware or no known bad things on a packet by packet basis. This is highly resource uh, dependent. It consumes lots of resources to look at each and every bit and categorize everything. So as you can imagine, if you turn on inspection, your throughput will necessarily go down. And this is the largest impact to the box if you choose to use that feature. 
So now that we've kind of built up from the ground up, you understand there's three main features. There's a lot of others that are available and we'll go through that during the live demo. Now we get to throughput and sizing estimation. And this is where I'll kind of pop back out to the data sheet. So when you're deploying firepower in the data sheet, we have this broken down two sections, one for firepower threat defense code and one for ASA. The difference being when you're running firepower threat defense, you have all of those additional capabilities, the URL, the malware, the threat versus just a single five tuple firewall. Now, we've done our best kind of ballpark estimates with certain features turned on and certain packet sizes. The issue here is we can't just provide every single possible permutation uh, and every single possible permutation of the features and or the packet sizes. It, it just would be too large. And we can't possibly test all those to guarantee there's no edge cases. So what Cisco and many other vendors do is we come up with like a standard test set. In this case, you can see we say the average packet size in this test is 1,024 bytes. Uh, and we have the firewall and application visibility turned on. With that configuration, you can expect 16.5 gigabits per second. Now, that is not assuming that you're also doing RAVPN, where you're consuming resources to encrypt and decrypt traffic. We're not assuming you're doing TLS decryption. We're not assuming that you're doing a million other things you could be doing. Again, these are ballparks with specifically only these features and these packet sizes turned on. You can see down here when we turn on inspection, snort, the throughput drops just slightly. And that's because in these boxes, a certain number of the CPU are actually relegated or designated for snort, whether or not you're using them. And what this means is that uh, when you turn on the snort cores, they're not consuming any additional CPU. It's not stealing resources from other components in the deployment. So for the most part, your throughput stays static, stays roughly the same. Now, there's one key bit of information here for you to be able to practically use these numbers to apply and size the device for your network. Uh, and that is that the throughput is fairly tightly correlated to the packet size. So as packet size goes down, throughput tends to go down proportionally. Now, I'm not saying that's a perfect linear relationship, but it's pretty good, right? So if you, if you drop packet size in half, you could probably expect your uh, throughput to go down uh, to eh, about half, maybe a little more, but it's a pretty close relationship. All right, that aside, if you are going through any types of throughput estimations, uh, I would recommend you definitely reach out to your security TSA who's covering the firewalls. There are many tools internally and actual live testing environments where we can more accurately come up with the throughput you need for your network based on every single feature you're using, all the different packet sizes you see, the averages, you know, all the different permutations. You give us that info, we can actually come back, test it, and come back to you with a more accurate uh, estimation of your throughput. <coughs> Okay, so that's it for the throughput sizing and estimation. Uh, all the other features that we talked about, that's about it for here. Uh, we're going to get in the next section. I'll see you guys later.